We're on the last chapter of Babe today, chapter 12, called Battle Do. Hundreds of thousands of pairs of eyes watched that first dog, but none more keenly than those of Hoggett, Fly, and Babe. The car park was a big sloping field overlooking the course, and the farmer had driven the Land Rover to the topmost corner, well away from all the other cars. From inside, the three so different faces watched intently. Conditions, Hoggett could see immediately, were very difficult, in addition to the driving rain, which made the going slippery and the sheep more obstinate than usual, there was a strong wind blowing almost directly from the holding post back towards the handler, and the dogs were finding it hard to hear the commands. The more anxious the dog was, the more the sheep tried to break from him, and thus the angrier he became. It was a vicious circle, and when at last the ten sheep were pinned and the handler pulled the gate shut and cried, that'll do! No one was surprised that they had scored no more than 70 points out of a possible hundred. So it went on. Man after man came to stand behind the, beside the great sarsen stone. Men from the north and the west, from Scotland, from Wales, from Ireland, with dogs, large and small, rough-coated and smooth, black and white, or gray or brown or blue and merrill. Some fared better than, better than others, of course, were steadier on their sheep or had steadier sheep to deal with. But still, as Farmer Hoggett's turn, turn drew near, as luck would have it, he was last to go. There was no score higher than 85. At home, Mrs. Hoggett chanced to turn to the sound of the television and turned it back up to hear the commentator confirm this. One more to go, he said, and the target to beat is 85 points set by Mr. Jones from Wales and his dog, Byrne. A very credible total considering the appalling weather conditions we have up here today. It's very hard to imagine that score being beaten, but here comes the last competitor to try and do just that. And suddenly there appeared on the screen before Mrs. Hoggett's eyes, the tall, long striding figure of her husband, walking out towards the great stone with tubby old fly at his heels. This is Mr. Hoggett with pig, said the commentator. A bit of a strange name that, but I must say the dog's rather on the fat side. Hello, he's sending the dog back. What on earth? Oh, good heavens, would you look at that? And as Mrs. Hoggett and hundreds of thousands of other viewers looked, they saw Fly go trotting back to the car park. And from it, cantering through the continuing rain, came the lean, long, beautifully clean figure of a large white pig. Straight to Hoggett's side ran Babe and stood like a statue, his great ears fanned, his little eyes fixed on the distant sheep. At home, Mrs. Hoggett's mouth opened wide, but for once, no sound came from it. On the course, there was a moment of stunned silence, then a great burst of noise. On the screen, the camera showed every aspect of the amazing scene. The spectators pointing, gaping, grinning, the red-faced judges hastily conferring, Hoggett and Babe waiting patiently, and finally the commentator. This is really quite ridiculous, he said with a shamefaced smile. But in, po in point of fact, there seems to be nothing in the rule book that says only sheepdogs may compete. So it looks as though the judges are bound to allow Mr. Hoggett to run this, er, sheep pig. I suppose we'll have to call it, ha ha. One look at it and the sheep will disappear into the next county without a doubt. Still, we might as well end the day with a good laugh. And indeed, that, at that moment, a great gale of laughter arose as Hoggett, receiving the most unwilling nod from the judges, said quietly, away to me, pig, and Babe began his outrun to the right. How they roared at the mere sight of him running, though many noticed how fast he went, and at the purely crazy thought of a pig herding sheep, and especially at the way he squealed and squealed at the top of his voice, in foolish excitement, they supposed. But though he was excited, tremendously excited at the thrill of actually competing in the grand challenge sheep dog trails, trials, Babe was nobody's fool. He was yelling out the password, I may be you, I may be ram, I may be mutton, may be lamb, but on the hoof or on the hook, I ain't so stupid as I look, as he ran. This was the danger point before he'd meet his sheep, and again and again he repeated the magic password, shouting above the noise of wind and rain, his eyes fixed on the ten sheep by the holding post. Their eyes were just as fixed on him, eyes that bulged at the sight of this great strange animal approaching, but they held steady, and now the distant crowd fell silent. Suddenly, as they saw the pig take up a perfect position behind his sheep and heard the astonished judges awarding 10 points for a faultless outrun, 
Just for luck, in case they hadn't believed their ears, Babe gave the password one last time. I ain't so stupid as I looked, he panted. And a very good afternoon to you all. And I do apologize for having to ask you to work in this miserable weather. I hope you'll forgive me. At once, as he had hoped, there was a positive babble of voices. Fancy him knowing the password. What lovely manners. Not like them nasty wolves. What do you want us to do, young master? Quickly, for his he was conscious that his time was ticking away. Babe, first asking politely for their attention, outlined the course to them. And I would really be most awfully grateful, he said, if you would bear these points in mind. Keep tightly together and at a steady pace, not too fast, not too slow, and walk exactly through the middle of each of the three gates, if you'd be good enough. The moment I enter the shedding ring with the four of you who are wearing collars, how nice they look on you ladies. Please walk out of it. And then if you'd be kindly to all go straight to the final pin, I'd be so much obliged. All this talk took quite a time and the crowd and the judges and Mrs. Hoggett and her hundreds of thousands of fellow viewers began to feel that nothing else was going to happen, that the sheep were never going to move. And the whole thing was a stupid farce, a silly joke that had fallen flat. Only Hoggett, standing silent in the rain beside the sarsen stone, had complete confidence in the skills of his sheep pig. And suddenly the miracle began to happen. Marching two by two, as steady as guardsmen on parade, the ten sheep set off for the fetch gates, babe a few paces behind them, silent, powerful, confident. Straight as a die they went toward the distant Hoggett, straight between the exact center of the fetch gates, without a moment's hesitation, without deviating an inch from their unswerving course. Hoggett said nothing, made no sign, gave no whistle, didn't move as the sheep rounded him so closely as to almost brush his boots. And then the fetch completed, set off for the driveway gates. Once again, their pace never changing, never looking to the left nor the right, keeping so tight a formation that you could have dropped a big tablecloth over the lot. They passed through the precise middle of the driveway gates and turned as one animal to face the cross drive gates. It was just the same here. The sheep passed through perfectly and wheeled for the shedding ring, while all the time the judges' sh scorecard showed maximum points, and the crowd watched in a kind of hypnotized hutch, whispering to one another for fear of breaking the spell. He's not put a foot wrong. Bang through the middle of every gate. Lovely, steady pace. And the handler, he's not said a word, even moved, just stood there leaning on his stick. Ah, but he'll have to move now. You're never going to tell me that pig can shed four sheep out of the ten on his own. The shedding ring was a circle, perhaps 40 yards in diameter, marked out by little heaps of sawdust. And into it the sheep walked, still calm, still collected, stood waiting. Outside the circle, Babe waited, his eyes on Hoggett. The crowd waited. Mrs. Hoggett waited. Hundreds of thousands of viewers waited. Just then, as it seemed nothing more would happen, that the man had somehow lost control of the sheep pig and that the sheep pig had lost interest in his sheep, Farmer Hoggett raised his stick and with it gave a sharp tap on the great sarsen stone, a tap that sounded like a pistol shot in the tense atmosphere. At this signal, Babe gent walked gently into the circle and up to the sheep. Beautifully done, he told them quietly. I can't tell you how grateful I am. I am to you all. Now, if the four ladies with collars would kindly walk out of the ring when I give a grunt, I should be so much obliged. Then it would be good if all of you would wait until my boss has walked across to the final collecting pen over there and opened its gates. All that remains for you to do is to pop in. Would you do that, please? Ah, 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 ah they said softly. And as Babe gave one deep grunt, the four collared sheep detached themselves from their companions and calmly, unhurriedly walked out of the shedding ring. Unmoving, held by the magic of the moment, the crowd watched with no sound but a great sigh of amazement. No one could quite believe his eyes. No one seemed to notice that the wind had dropped and the rain had stopped. No one was surprised when a single shaft of sunshine came suddenly through a hole in the gray clouds and shone full upon the great sarsen stone. Slowly, with his long strides, Hoggett left it and walked to the little enclosure of hurdles, the final rest test of his shepherding. He opened its gate and stood silently still, 
while the shed animals walked back into the ring to rejoin the rest. Then he nodded once at Babe, no more, and steadily, smartly, straightly, the ten sheep with the sheep pig at their heels marched into the final pin and Hoggett closed the gate. As he dropped the loop of the rope over the hurdle stake, everyone could see the judge's marks. A hundred out of a hundred, the perfect performance, never before reached by man and dog in the whole history of the sheepdog trials, but now a sheep achieved by man and pig, and everyone went mad. At home, Mrs. Hoggett erupted like a volcano into a great lava flow of words, pouring them out to the two figures held by the camera, as though they were actually inside that box in the corner of her sitting room, cheering them on, praising them, congratulating first one, then the other, telling them how proud she was to hurry home, not be late for supper because it was going to be shepherd's pie. As for the crowd of spectators at the Grand Challenge Sheepdog Trials, they shouted and yelled and waved their arms and jumped about while the astonished judges scratched their heads and the amazed competitors shook theirs in wondering disbelief. Marvelous, marvelous, bleated the ten panda sheep. And from the back of an ancient Land Rover at the top of the car park, a tubby old black and white collie, her plumed tail wagging wildly, barked and barked and barked for joy. In all the hubbub of noise and excitement, two figures stood silently still, side by side. Then Hoggett bent and gently scratched Bay between his great ears, uttering those words that every handler always says to his working companion when the job is finally done. Perhaps no one else heard the words, but if they did, there was no doubting the truth of them. That'll do, said Farmer Hoggett to his sheep pig. That'll do. The end. This book was written by Dick King Smith, who was born and raised in Gloucester, England. After 20 years as a farmer, he turned to teaching and into writing children's books. And he's written a lot of them that have been very popular with the kids. Thanks for listening to Babe. I'll let you know tomorrow what the next book's going to be.